the challenge for those of us in healthcare now is that we're so used to providing healthcare within the four walls of the hospital, and in order to make it in healthcare, we have to keep people out of the hospital. Healthcare reform is, is not really focused upon hospital care, it's focused on a continuum of care. So those of us in hospital administration now have to figure out how to keep people well. Now that takes a lot of patient responsibility as well. And once we do take care of people, how do we keep them from bouncing back into the hospital again? So I think in the future you'll see hospitals broaden their scope. They'll be in wellness, which a lot of us are already in. They'll be in post-acute care, which a lot of us are already in. And they'll be managing the health of a population. I think those things make real sense. Where my frustration is today is that we, we're focused on cost and we're not focused on value. I don't think you can talk about cost without talking about quality. So for example, in our community, we have 16 open heart programs in a, in a community of two million people. I would say that if you really looked at the community need, we probably need about three open heart programs. So when are we going to, as a society, figure out who does it best and how do we funnel patients to those providers that do it best? Industry got it right years ago. If you do it right the first time, it's less costly. Last year alone in our organization, the cost of taking care of patients that had no insurance was $52 million. That was the cost. That's an operating expense for our organization. So if, if we get more people insured, I think that makes sense to those of us in healthcare. The challenge right now is that Medicare reductions were to be partially offset by Medicaid expansion. And unfortunately, what happened was with the states now get to decide on their own whether they're going to expand Medicaid. I live in a state that is not expanding Medicaid. So not only do we have the Medicare cuts, we do not get a benefit of Medicaid expansion. So in our, in our world today, we're being told that we need to take 20 to 40 percent of our expense base out in order to make it in health care reform. For our organization, that's 200 to 400 million dollars a year that we, we would attempt to take out, which is pretty mind-numbing, to be honest. I mean, I had a friend who was running a children's hospital, and we were talking about that, and I said, Ben, it's got, it's, it's so, it's got to be very, it, it, it must be more rewarding to be in, in pediatric care than it is in adult care. And he said, the issues are the same. So you've got a little one who's got a 2% chance of living. How many millions of dollars of care do you put into that 2% chance? And who are you to tell the parent no? Right. I mean, those are mind. I mean, how, how do you go to sleep at night trying to make that decision? I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, I look at the, I, I, I mean, I, we've got kids in our hospital, we've got 95 year olds in our hospital, and, and you know, death is a hard thing for people. But at some point, we as, an, we as a country have to figure out what we're going to do with this. Because at this pace, whether it's 90% or 75% or whatever it is, it's a lot of money being spent to keep people alive for how long and for what value of life and what quality of life. When I thought about health care, it's interesting because I'm not a clinical person. So you would think of healthcare mean, being meaningful to physicians and nurses and allied health professionals. As, an, as a person who didn't have that skill, I still wanted to be attached to that. And part of what happened was my dad died of colon cancer when I was 21 or 22 years of age. And I watched the healthcare system and I watched what worked and I watched what didn't work. And I think that coupled with my frustration, if you will, in the world of public accounting, allowed me to consider health care, and I think I, I haven't looked back since I did that. I round on patients. I go into patients' rooms, and I meet with patients, and I meet with their, their loved ones, and their family members, and, and other guests. And my job is to make sure that our team is doing the best it possibly can and taking care of that family from a service standpoint, from a quality standpoint, make sure we have the right people on the team. So when I think about the background here at Wesleyan, it's really about, I think, I think being confident in what you do, it means that you've got this broad background. In a liberal arts school, you're not pigeonholed in one specific area. You get a broad brush in terms of your education. And when I look at what's going on in healthcare today, there are so many facets of healthcare that have nothing to do with direct patient care. And I think it's very important that people consider that as a profession because as the CEO, I go home every night and I will tell you I feel like I've made a contribution and I feel like the work we do is important.